2015 meeting of the uh, Planning Board of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, we have a fairly short agenda tonight. Uh, we'll be approving minutes from a prior meeting. We have two items of new business. The first, uh, Barry subdivision and Broad Cove subdivision amendments. William Holt is requesting amendments to previously approved, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Barry subdivision and the Broad Cove subdivision to amend lot lines to merge uh, budding land. The second item is the Robinson Woods II resource protection permit. Um, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust is requesting a resource protection permit to install up to 250 feet of boardwalk and an RP1 buffer, RP2 wetlands uh, area, and about 60 feet of fencing adjacent to two vernal pools. And both of the, uh, the subdivision amendment and the resource protection permit will have opportunities for the public to be heard if they wish. Uh, first item of business being the minutes. Uh, they have been circulated. Do any board members have comments or questions? Elaine. At the top of page five on the uh, minutes and the motion that I made, after the word inventory chart, I had added as amended at this meeting. So comma as amended at this meeting, comma. Okay, that's the paper streets. That was, uh, that was the paper street chart because right. we had immediately beforehand made some changes to that chart. That is correct. As amended at this meeting? At this meeting, correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, do any members have other comments or questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended by Elaine's uh, observation. Caroline? Move that we accept the minutes of the July 21st, 2015 uh, planning board meeting as amended. Is there a second? Seconded uh, motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Henry, did you have a? No, no, I was just oh. seconding it. Okay. I don't know what you've got. I'll then call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Two abstains. Two abstains. Two abstains. Uh, two abstains. Okay. Oh. Unanimous with two abstentions. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, the next item of business is. Excuse me. Um, William S. Holt is requesting amendments to the Barry subdivision located on Hannaford Cove Road and the Broad Cove subdivision located on Running Tide Road to amend the lot lines. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Well, the procedure will be as follows. The planner will provide a summary of the project within the context of the town regulations. Uh, we'll next have the applicant or his representatives summarize the project. The board will then consider uh, the issue of completeness, if the application is complete, <coughs> and the public may be heard on that item. The board will consider whether a site walk should be scheduled, uh, and then the board uh, can also consider whether to approve, approve with conditions, or table the application itself on the merits. I will start off with the, the planner summarizing the project. Marie? Sure. The uh, Barry subdivision is a four lot subdivision with frontage on two lights and most of it's on Hannaford Cove Road. The planning board. Oh. Well, thank Barry's you for that. Subdivision is a four lot subdivision that was previously approved by the planning board. It has some frontage on Two Lights Road, most of its frontage on Hannaford Cove Road. Uh, it was approved as a four lot subdivision, and an abutter purchased lot four. And one of the requests tonight is to amend the Berry subdivision to delete the lot line separating that lot four from the abutting property which he owns. The second piece of the amendment is 
a section of <coughs> Mr. Berry's, uh, excuse me, uh, Dr. Holt's land, which abuts the Broad Cove subdivision, and that subdivision was approved probably in the 70s by the planning board. And again, an abutting property owner is purchasing some of Dr. Holt's land and wishing to merge that land in with the lot in the Broad Cove subdivision. And so that's a second lot line amendment. So those are the two amendments in front of you. I should point out in the RA district, the minimum lot size is 80,000 square feet. The minimum road frontage is 125 feet. Thank you. Uh, we'll hear next from the applicant or his representatives uh, to describe the uh, project. My name is Bill Holt, and uh, or I guess William S. as it appears on the document. Um, yes, I thought I would like to just uh, speak very briefly, uh, give a little bit of history to the uh, lot, uh, the 27-acre lot uh, and the, uh, the lot number four that we're talking about tonight. It was in 1987, I believe, that uh, the Maxwell family uh, was interested in selling this 27-acre piece. I got wind of it and was very anxious to buy it. At the time that I purchased it uh, from Arlene Maxwell, uh, I offered a half a million less than the asking price for the land and a handshake that I would not develop it. She accepted that and it has been that way. And for 28 years, uh, my wife and I have owned these 27 acres and the only thing that has happened there is a few grapevines have been planted. Over the last few years, it's become clear that oceanfront property is expensive. I retired three years ago, and it became quite clear that pensions are limited. And so a decision was made to uh, uh, market the oceanfront home. And we considered subdivisions and decided no. We bought it because we didn't want it subdivided. And so what we propose to do as part of this application is to offer for sale 10 acres on the ocean, at the ocean front side of these 27 acres. To offer to our neighbors, the Wassermans, approximately four acres in the middle, which backs onto their running tide uh, road address. Uh, we understand and they understand that under present town rules, this is completely undevelopable for two or three very good reasons. Uh, and, but the Wassermans wished it for view protection and personal recreation. Then to retain the upper part of the uh, land, approximately 14 acres. And when Henry Berry the fourth, Henry the, the surviving Henry Berry, <laughs> offered uh, the uh, nine acre piece uh, for sale, I leaped at the chance to buy lot number four. My motivation was very clear. This gave me a way to sell the oceanfront land, turn it into uh, enough money to supply my pension funds, and to buy and build a peaceful home for my retirement on this dead-end road, Hannaford Cove Road. Along the way, somehow, for reasons that I, even I don't understand, I developed a passion for wanting to develop a vineyard growing cold hardy grapes. That because it had never been done before and was said it couldn't be done and that's been a lot of fun for me. That was and that is my motivation. My intention uh, then is to live uh, on lot number four, to pursue my vineyard passion on the remaining uh, acres uh, in the upper part and that is it. For 28 years, I have developed nothing. Until they throw a shovel full of dirt on my casket, I will develop nothing there. Uh, there has been concern expressed about the possibility of uh, lots being built in that upland, and I suppose that's true. And indeed, when I bought it, it was ready to have lots built on it, and it was through my efforts and my purchase that there are not houses there this very day. Um, I can only give assurances to the uh, planning board that uh, what I have said is true. It's been proven by the last 28 years, and I'd like it to be proven by, for the rest of my years. 
I've spoken to my children and heirs. They understand this. I don't think they have any interest in developing anything either. So I'm hoping that this will be approved. Why did we ask for the lot line change or the boundaries change? I'm sorry, it was my idea. I thought I would like the house to back against that property line. And because of setback rules, I thought if we eliminate that boundary, then I wouldn't have to fret about the uh, setback lines. Uh, and also, I thought it'd be easier on the town to send me one tax bill instead of two. That's it. That is the motivation for requesting to move that line. I believe the washerman's motivation was equally simple uh, and has nothing to do with developing anything. So that would be the story. That's the reason by, behind this application and the reason why uh, I certainly hope uh, the planning board looks favorably upon it. Thank you, Dr. Holt. Um, Can I ask a quick sure. question, Doc? Well, I actually, go ahead, John. I'll ask when you I'm sorry to say. Oh, he'll ask uh, after, after John Mitchell is done with his presentation. Uh, good evening. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, and I represent uh, Dr. Holt. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, the first slide is just to show the uh, location map in context with the neighborhood. Um, this is the Holt property. Um, Hannaford Cove Road lies to the south. Running Hill Road is part of the Broad Cove development, uh, is located on the north. Uh, the land extends approximately 1,600 feet back from Maxwell Cove. This is the Holt property, um, Hannaford Cove Road, uh, Running Tide Road is located here. A lot four of the Berry subdivision is located here, shown in blue. Uh, the property is approximately 27 acres, and the lot four is approximately three acres. The proposal is to, as Dr. Holt mentioned, uh, create an estate lot. This uh, uh, is, is 10.5 acres. Um, Doc, Mr. and Mrs. Holt reside in their home located right here overlooking the water. Um, their driveway is located off of Running Hill Road in this location. The uh, Wasserman property or the parcel that is proposed to be conveyed to the Wassermans uh, is located right here. The Wassermans reside here. And the remainder of the land um, is located in the rear of the property. This is lot four, which is proposed to be transferred uh, to the remainder of the whole property. This is an enlargement of the, uh, uh, oh, this, actually this, the next two slides are um, plans of the amended subdivision. Uh, this is the amended subdivision plan of the, broad, of the Running Hill Road area. Uh, this is the 4.3 acre parcel in the middle of um, Dr. Holt's property that is, um, proposed to be conveyed to the Wassermans, so this lot line would uh, disappear. This is an RP1 wetland, and this represents the 250-foot setback. This is the amended subdivision plan for the Berry subdivision. Um, this, as I mentioned, is the lot four, which is planned to be merged with uh, the Holt property, and uh, that will turn out to be approximately 14 acres <clears throat> once the uh, lot, lot line has been eliminated. And uh, as Dr. Holt just mentioned, um, he plans to build his home um, in this location here, right up next to what is currently the rear property line of lot four. And uh, it is the, the most desirable location of the lot. It's a high point, 
and the intention is to build uh, his retirement home overlooking the uh, vineyards. This photo is, uh, I, I included three photos to show the board. Um, this photo is, uh, this line here is approximately the limit of the 10.5 acre parcel, uh, which we're, we're calling the estate lot, looking back towards the residence in, in the ocean beyond. This area of the property is um, the area where the parcel is to be conveyed to the Wassman's property. And this is very difficult to read, but this is the, uh, this is the rear lot line of lot four, and this area consists of uh, Bill's vineyards. So the, the house is planned to be built here overlooking the vineyards. And that is um, the extent of our proposal. I'm glad to answer any questions. Questions? Yeah, uh, Joe. So the original 27-acre lot is not part of a subdivision, right? That's correct. The so the, the brunt of this is that you're adding that blue piece to the Berry subdivision, the green piece to the Broad Cove subdivision, and then the tan piece will remain not part of any subdivision? That's correct. And uh, I know Maureen mentioned something about um, street frontage. You don't have adequate, this is a non-conforming lot, right? Uh, which one? Uh, well, 20, the 27 acre lot, and it'll continue to be. Well, the, yeah, the access is here. The current access for the right. 27 acre. So it's non conforming with respect to the required street frontage? I believe it is, yeah. Down there in the end. Do you Can have I ask an answer one more yep. clarifying question? I thought I read in the materials that, in fact, you were removing that lot from the Barry subdivision, not that you are adding property to the Barry subdivision. Can you just clarify? I thought that by adding it to the parcel that was out of the subdivision, you were saying that you were removing it from the Barry subdivision. I, I think we would be, you can answer this maybe, but I think we would be removing it from the Barry subdivision and transferring it to the whole property. So it would not be in a, an approved subdivision at all? You're not adding land that, to the Barry subdivision? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so that's right. a little different than what you said to Joe. Sure. Sure. Charlie Katzlevy, uh, representing Dr. Holt. And I believe the proposal is to turn the Barry Lot subdivision into a three lot subdivision and to take lot four out of the subdivision. Okay, that's, that's what I thought the materials had said. Thank you. Oh. Joe, have, you're, have you had a chance okay. to ask all your questions? No. Any other questions? Jonathan. There's nothing. Um, the lot number four of the Barry subdivision as it is right now, there's nothing stopping someone from building a single family house on that property Correct. at this point. Correct. Okay. And John, you said the the uh, the back, the westerly part of the property is presently in agricultural use, namely vineyards, is that correct? That's correct. Are these commercial uh, do you raise wine, sell it, or is this a, a, a hobby uh, vineyard? Or? Uh, yes, uh, in a very limited way. There's some available at a local source, uh, and uh, primarily it's a hobby, but I have an extra. So very limited selling, no tasting, no nothing like that. I'm invisible to the neighborhood. I sell it all through a wholesale person. We never have a guest there. Joe? Sure. If I can follow up. So what's, what's the advantage of taking it out of the subdivision and why would you not just leave it in there? A lot more. As, as we've mentioned, um, the, the whole intent was to, so that we could, so that Bill could build his home right here um, on the high point of the land overlooking the vineyard. No, I, I understand that, but if you 
change the boundaries of the lot but kept it in the subdivision, you could still do that, couldn't you? Church. Would, would one of the, one of you folks like to answer Joe's question? Any any of the, of you three is fine. I guess I hadn't thought about it, uh, except that I believe the lot number four has certain descriptors in the in the Barry subdivision. Uh, I can't personally think of a reason why you couldn't add my 14 acres to the Barry subdivision or do it the other way around. It's immaterial to me. You know, and my question, I guess, for your attorney is that it, it struck me that isn't what's really happening is that Lot 4 in the Barry subdivision has actually just gotten bigger by the, by the merger of the abutting property and just eliminating the lot line. Is maybe it's a, a technical difference without a meaning, I don't know. I, I think that's accurate. I think that the idea is to take the two lots and merge them into a single lot. Um, the question is whether that lot is then a part of the existing subdivision or whether it's not a subdivision lot. Uh, my client doesn't have a strong preference one way or the other, although um, as his attorney, my preference would be to merge it um, with the, uh, you know, to take the lot out of the subdivision. Um, but regardless of which way we go, if there was ever to be um, future development, subdivision type development on that acreage, regardless of whether it's part of the Barry subdivision or not, it would have to come back before this planning board. Are, are there any covenants within the subdivision, the Barry subdivision, that would be uh, eliminated by withdrawing it? Oh, I'm sorry, Victoria. Well, I know we're still on completeness, and this goes beyond it, but you're touching into an area in which I did want to ask the applicant, and I don't know if I should do it now, we should just finish completeness. Well, we, 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 should, we should finish completeness before we get to the merits, but this, this to me has an element of yeah. completeness to it, so. Well, then I can ask my sure, question. Sure, go ahead. I, I feel this is beyond completeness, but however, we are on to a topic I did want to ask you about why leaving the Barry subdivision and, and, and not going into the Barry subdivision. And you, one of you did just note that there are two provisions that are in the Barry subdivision that I could not find on this plat. And one of them would be note, uh, the former note number eight to the original Barry subdivision that said, all lots sh shall be served by public water and private sewer system. I was going to ask if you had any objection to that. Uh, the note number 11 on the former Barry subdivision said, if the, if the septic systems shown on this plan are moved, they shall be no closer than 25 feet from the RP2 wetland. And that is not on this plat. That was on the Barry. And so it's beyond completeness, I really believe. However, you are touching on why are you not part of the Barry? And if you were part of Barry, you would be part of these because these would. Right. Carry and those two notes can be added to our amended subdivision plan. You have no objection? No objection. No. I mean, it's public water. It's going to be, uh, we have an approved septic system, on site disposal system. You do? Yes. Which was part of the Barry subdivision. So that would go back to after we do completeness, I suppose, a final decision you folks on whether you want to come into the Perry subdivision or stay. No, we can, we can add those two notes. Okay, but it's beyond completeness at this point, but. Okay, yeah, we, we are still on completeness. Uh, Elaine, in my, view. my only comment was I'd like to focus on completeness because I have concerns in that area, but I'd like to hear the public comment first as we usually do. Okay, are there any other comments or questions by the board before we hear from the public on the issue of completeness? Uh, there being none, we will now open the hearing to the public. Um, we would ask you to come up uh, one at a time to the podium, clearly give your name and address, and your comments should be limited to about three minutes, if you don't mind. Uh, but please keep in mind we are now talking about the completeness of the application, not the merits of the application. So if you want to talk about the merits, you'll have that opportunity a little bit later. Would any members of the public like to be heard on the issue of completeness? Okay, there being none, we will, oh, all right, sir. Uh, if you would, please, yes. If you would give your name, address, and then uh, your comments, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jeff Hoffman. I'm the Assistant Director of Public Works. I'm here to 
My name is Florence Braff. My address is 69 Hanover Cove Road. I think I have Dr. Holt somewhere along the line. Um, my question has to do with uh, covenants going with the land, and, and it's, it's a little out in left field, but I know that the Berry property had deeded beach rights, um, and I suspect that the subdivisions this probably also did. Ms. Umara explained that these are private covenants, but the board should perhaps be at least surprised of them. Um, if the lot four is merged with the back lot, the 10 acre lot, what effect does this have on the beach rights? I'm sure that this is a question that may have arisen, and I would be very glad as, as it goes. You raise the question of covenants, and this is one. When I looked at it, um, the lot four passed any covenants, any, any rights or covenants it could to the taker of the lot. And if the lots are merged, that'll be a problem. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, ma'am. A gentleman back there. My name is Tom Egan. I live in Stewart, Florida. I'm a legal resident of Stewart, Florida. I'm a summer resident of uh, the Hannaford Cove area. My family and I have owned that property there for 35 years coming up September 5. First question, and, and I, I have, uh, let's see, 200 and, I have an interest in this matter because I have 268 uh, feet of property along the, 238 feet along the northeast boundary of Lot 4 and my property of three acres on that side of the road also shares a 456 foot boundary along, uh, uh, with the 29 or 27 acres. My first question is to Maureen. Maureen, were you able to disperse or distribute to the members of the planning board my uh, three-page submission this afternoon? Your email came in at 538, so no. Okay. May I approach the uh, planning board with a submission for the file? If you, you intend to pass out of what you have in writing? Yes. Sure, if you pass it out, we'll, we'll consider it in due course. Uh, if you would like to, within your three-minute time limit, summarize what you say here, that would be fine. Why don't, why don't you just do this? We'll, uh, use your time at the podium. Here we go. Well, I, you know, I've lived here for 35 years, and if you only give me three minutes, I figure that I can get a minute for every 10 years that I've lived here. But I'll do my best to, to summarize it. Actually, if you would, but in... Sir, remember, too, we're talking about the completeness of the application. We're not talking about the merits. I've given you five reasons why, in that paper, and this memorandum, why the application is not complete. At number two, the application is not complete because the division of Dr. Holt's property, as he described it, is speculation only. He has not provided to the planning board any legal commitment to sell to Mrs. Wasserman or any legal commitment to sell to a third party uh, his residence. Therefore, you're talking about not just 14 acres being adjacent to Lot 4, but 27 acres. So it's incomplete in that regard. The application is not complete because the removal of restrictions, regulations, and siting at Lot 4 is without cause and without justification. He stated the only reason why he wants to remove lot four from the subdivision or append 29 acres, 27 acres to the subdivision since he doesn't have any commitment to out, uh, out deed those properties is because he would like a single tax bill and also he would like to adjust the position of that house relative to the boundary line. Well, he can do that since there's common ownership of those two lots without the onerous and very significant change to the lot, uh, lot four. And so it's incomplete, the application is incomplete, because um, you haven't a, uh, a document in the file that refers to all of the risks 
that the first planning board review of Barry subdivision analyzed relative to the risks of this new and unique and huge division of property. Uh, the planning board, the applicant is, uh, the application is incomplete because it does not address the private access way, access way provisions of the ordinance. Now you'd ask, you might ask, why are the private access way provisions of the ordinance involved here? Well, it's because uh, if Dr. Holt uh, cites his property, he doesn't have any commitment to cite it in a particular place, he hasn't entered into a contract with you, there's no pro forma contract with the planning board about the siting of the, the property. If he cites it in back of lot four, even though he owns lot four, he doesn't have a hundred feet, at least a minimum of a hundred feet of frontage on Hannaford Cove because deed A for the 29 acres is different than deed B. So before he could, before you could, uh, before he could build there, before he could get a public access way permit, he would have to merge his two lots. He hasn't done that. He hasn't made that commitment. Um, and, you know, uh, I'll, I'll try to move on quickly because I only have three minutes. The most interesting problem here is, the most interesting problem here is the covenant in the Barry subdivision deed from the Barry estate to Dr. Holt and I assume the three other owners of those lots, namely, and I'm quoting, uh, pardon me, this, sir, I the described uh, covenants me, sir, are hereby the described covenants are hereby conveyed subject to a covenant running with the land, not to violate or threaten, or to violate any covenants, conditions, easements, and restrictions noted on the plan. There's a covenant running with the land that proscribes any owner of a lot in the Barry subdivision from violating any of the restrictions, provisions, covenants on the plan. And so he hasn't addressed how he intends to avoid that covenant restriction that constrains him and falls uh, uh, as a burden to him relative to his three other lot owners. And therefore, the application is not complete in that regard. Thank you, sir. Are there any other members of the public who would like to be heard on the issue of completeness? In just a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, there being no other public, members of the public who would like to be heard, I'm closing the public comment of the, this application on the issue of completeness. Uh, members of the board, would you like to discuss? Would you like to ask questions of whoever? Elaine? I have a different completeness problem. I have to say that the information presented in Mr. Egan's letter is too complicated in detail for me to assess it one way or, or the other. Very so great. I can't, really can't comment on that. But I had a very different concern with completeness because it seems to me that we're taking a 27-acre lot with two points of access onto Jordan Farm Road and Running Tide Road and transferring a significant portion of that lot, creating what would otherwise be a landlocked portion, and transferring the access to a significant part of those 27 acres from Broad Cove Road, or it's actually running Tide Road and Jordan Farm Road, transferring the access from those points to Hannaford Cove Road. So we're significantly altering the access points on Hannaford Cove Road. Let me finish. Um, and yet the applicant has provided us zero information with respect to traffic and simply said it doesn't apply. And I strongly disagree with that. I think traffic does apply because we are changing fundamentally the potential traffic on Hannaford Cove Road, which is a substandard road, and we're taking it away from another Cape Elizabeth subdivision. And I think as a planning board, as a planning matter, we need to assess that. 
The other thing I want to say is that I understand and have no reason but to believe what Dr. Holt has asserted in terms of his personal goals for the property, and I applaud your many years of stewardship of that property. I think that's wonderful, and I'm all in favor of growing grapes. But as a planning board, we really can't take into account the present intention of a particular property owner with respect to what may happen in the future to their property. Whatever your intention may be as of this moment, people to whom you transfer the property or your heirs may have a completely different intention. And it seems to me, if the only thing you were trying to accomplish is, is what you're describing, there are other ways to get there. But that's not a completeness issue. To me, I don't think this application is complete without an assessment of the traffic issues, and we have no traffic information. Uh, I think Joe was first. Joe and then uh, Victoria. So, Elaine, I would agree with you, except for one point, which is that if the application is submitted as that rear lot is becoming part of the Barry subdivision, then it's not changing the traffic at all. It's still... I respectfully disagree with you on that. I think had, because I, I was on the board, I can't remember if you were or not, when we considered the Barry subdivision, but we were looking significantly, we were looking at very small parcels, but and we were not looking at a major developable parcel as part of the Barry subdivision. So there's a kind of consideration that I would have gone through at the time of creation of the Barry subdivision had this larger parcel been part of it. But, and since um, the parcel the, the, is now part of it, I think I, it, it's a different... Maybe Joe can I just respond? Well, because, so maybe, I, maybe I'm making an incorrect assumption, but if it remains part of the subdivision, then it's has, it, it remains as one lot, and any attempt to subdivide it would have to come back to the planning board. Whereas if it leaves the subdivision, it's a private lot, and it's subdividable it, at least as three lots, given the acreage, and probably more. So it seems like if they're submitting it as part of the Barry subdivision, the traffic you, you can't, the, 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 uh, there's already a curb cut there for that lot, and they can't increase the number of cars. On My that. concern is the options that would be available to the planning board at the time that this came back. If we are to approve this entire package, the only option for the development of that lot, should, should some future owner choose to develop it, the only access, it's a, it's a landlocked lot other than access to Hannaford Cove Road. At the present time, it's a landlocked lot other than access out to running tide road. I think to apprise this application, we need to compare those two options because otherwise the planning board would be left with a new subdivision option and somebody says, well, I have the right to divide this land you have to let me go to Hannaford Cove Road, otherwise you're making my land undevelopable, a situation which makes the planning board very uncomfortable and almost never is a position that the planning board takes. Not that we couldn't, but the practicalities are that we actually try to allow people as much flexibility developing their land as we can within the ordinance, although people have different views of, of what our intentions are but I try to avoid putting us in a position where our only option is to do something that actually doesn't make sense from a planning perspective. And I don't know where I would come out on this, whether I think this property is better accessed from Hannaford Cove Road or better accessed from Running Tide Road. What I'm saying is we've been given zero information to make that assessment. Um, Victoria, you had your hand up. I, I guess I'm not following you, Elaine. Um, if this plan, as proposed, goes through, there'll be a 10.5-acre um, lot, which has access in two different areas, and that's on the water. Right. And it's right next to an RP1 wetland. So if the whole 250-foot setback was um, on this map for you, you'd almost see that this lot has a lot of unbuildable land. 
So if the person who purchased two, the, with Dr. Holt and his wife own right now, that 2.5 acres, if you extend the 250 setback on that RP1, uh, possibly they could get another home there. So there might be in one more home on two, and it would probably be Running Hill, or, or maybe uh, the other one, I'm not sure. So that would be one home. Now you have the Wassermans, who we do have information saying, yes, they are interested in purchasing that property. Now, they're right smack dab in the middle. And I don't follow where anyone from this lot could be able to get to this lot because I don't follow where I'm the I'm not Wasserman sure which lot you're, you're talking about. Okay, so, then, so we just left the 2.5 acre lot that's on the water. Correct. Okay, and it has the RP1, it has a 250 foot buffer. So the housing would be very limited. I'm guessing one additional lot? Possibly. I don't think we have enough information to assess that. I'll agree with that. But I would say there is an RP1 250 foot setback. Then you have the next lot going down, the street, which is the, the Wasserman lot. Right. So that's right smack dab in the middle. Correct. I do not see how a road would ever go from the 10 acre lot over to the proposed 14 acre lot because it would have to go through the Wassermans. And that's part of my concern with the whole proposal. That, okay. That, that as, as presently that I find a little bit of a stretch. Okay. Yeah. Because as presently configured, a road could go across there and by cutting it off in the middle, it's forcing the only access to be on Hannaford Cove Road, which so, might be perfectly fine, might be preferable to putting more traffic into Broad Cove. I just don't see any information either to allow us to assess the developability of the property other than looking at wetland lines. And as we all know, people are remarkably creative in being able to develop near RP2 wetlands and surprisingly so sometimes in RP1s too, although Cape does have stricter regulations than almost anywhere else. Um, I just don't think we have enough information in front of us to assess. I think we're all making assumptions. Okay, and I would almost say that having the Wassermans agree to put a road through would almost be an assumption too. So I kind of look at it as you have the 10 acres over here on the whole property, then you have the Wassermans, and now we're asked to look at the, a third lot, the 14 acres. And that one has... Um, 714,000 square feet. I think I did the math and came up with about eight or nine units that could go on to such a property. However, as you know, there is wetland, so my math is very faulty. You would have to take out all that unbuildable land. So anyways, they, they are not coming us, to us tonight and saying, I want to put in a private access way, which would lead to further housing. I'm just, I'm hearing they're not changing from the driveway. We all know driveway means one. And not to say in the future, and we are the planning board and we would look in the future, but as of tonight, I'm not hearing that that is what is being proposed. Now, long term, they could come back and they would need to present a lot more information if they ever said, we want to build in the back. Um, I, mean, I don't think it would be in the near future, um, given Dr. Holt, we want you to be around, and so we hope his heirs would not sell off. But if they did, and that's what we are here for, I agree, it, the Berries sold off the land. That was their option. The Holts could sell off. Can I year. ask Elaine but one thing? I I'm, I'm, don't feel as concerned, I think, and feel that it's incomplete due to the breaking up of the land. Uh, Carol Ann, Jonathan, or Henry, you, you've been quiet. Do you have anything you'd like to add? I'd like to hear what Joe has to say. Okay. Oh, so, uh, Henry, just... Uh, just one quick question. Hannaford Cove Road comes out onto, and it's not named up here, at the top end. Two, Two lights, lights, right? lights. Two lights. Two lights is a, a complete entry all the way down. It's not blocked off. Yes. Because um, I, I live close by the here, and I'm... I'm and the, the Jordan Farm Road, if you go down Jordan Farm Road, it's blocked off. Right. So the only access, in actual fact, is from um, is from um, uh, Hunts Point onto this. Well, Jordan Farm, you would come, you would come down from um, Hunts Point Road and turn left onto Jordan Farm Road to come round to go down to what close to the Secret Beach, which is that point. 
There's the rotary at the end here. The, oh, it's not on the map. There's a rotary at the Could bottom of the mm. yeah, connector uh, here. Henry yes, King. he's right. He's, he's looking at your entire parcel before yes. you do anything. And yes. right now, before you do anything, if you go to the very end of Running Tide Road, that's where your house is. So your huge parcel right now has access off of the end of Running Tide through your home. But that's what you have for access to your house. You agree with that? Yeah. yeah we don't. Right. What, what I was saying. That's all he's saying. Well, I was saying Jordan Farm Road, as far as I know. You can't drive a car along Jordan Farm Road right to the end. There's a block. There's a, a um, there's there's change across there. So to get to the entrance to your house, two lights in Hannaford Cove. Not or running time. No, Post house or the current house, Henry. Oh, the current house. Yeah. 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 Okay, running so time. running tide. The only way to get to running tide, as I can see, is through is through some other way, which would be Hunt Point. Blocked off from here. So, right. in actual fact, Jordan <coughs> Farm Road, unless it's made up, is not part of this, would not be an accessible way to get to any new house that was down it's here. It's emergency access, isn't it? Yes. Well, you'd have to take the chain away. That's well, basically that's, what it that's is. exactly yeah. what the fire department yeah. or the police department would do. Now, the new lot, the new lot's a different question. I, I, I was just okay. trying to clarify where uh, it was. And the new Joe, you has no access, has no. It does not abut Jordan Farmer's right, other right. property. Right, right. It comes out at the end, which is not shown. Joe, you had a Okay, so I actually find myself agreeing with Elaine for the most part on her comment about the traffic, but it still seems to me that if that back lot is absorbed into uh, the buried subdivision, then you do have to take into account the developability of the other two lots. So it seemed to me that that's, you would want to know what the potential traffic impact of that is. So I agree with you. Uh, Caroline. Uh, I understand where we're going with this, but I think, but understanding the traffic for the developability of a lot, currently there's 27 acres that Dr. Holt could choose to develop with access from Yeah, right but you'd have to come Hanford. before the plan okay. work. That's right. And so wouldn't the Wassermans, if they figured out how to do that, and so wouldn't the purchases, purchasers of the estate lot, if they came to that, and so wouldn't whoever might decide. I mean, you can't. You can't predict what someone might want to do in 30 years. Um, right, but if you create a lot that's subdividable without thinking um, about the tra so yeah. without thinking about the traffic that it can. Well, I, I've got to say, I, I've, we've sat and we've looked at things, and we have not done that every single time we've looked at lots. Yeah, I'd like to get, stick my order in here too. I, I respect Lane's opinion on a lot of things, but I almost have to disagree categorically with the point you're making, how can you, we, there's nothing to assess. There's a minor shifting of the lot lines here. You're going to end up with the, with the lot four and the, the back lot where he proposes to put one house. There's the Wasserman conveyance and then there's what's left. If you could look at the maximum possible development for that whole thing. That, that, that's, we're way ahead of ourselves. Uh, there, there is nothing that I see in this configuration that lets you make any assessment uh, about what might come in the future, nor does it, does it affect how we would consider a subdivision proposal in the future. I, 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 I just don't see anything we can assess. Uh, Jonathan. I, Peter, I'm in, in agreement with that because what we're looking at here is a situation where uh, Dr. Holt has bought and owns lot number four and he could build on lot number four as it is right now. What he's proposing is to simply take away a lot line to create a larger subdivision also the other division or the other uh, parcels of land I don't think with regards to Hannaford Cove Road have an effect. But what he's simply doing is 
proposing that he creates a, a, a larger lot and he's going to use this other parcel that he has been using because it is his land for basically growing grapes. And I don't think that there needs to be an issue of a traffic study done on Hannaford Cove Road when you have a lot that's going to be one house, that's the only proposal, and that that lot right now is able to have and sustain one house. So I don't think for the issue of completeness, as it is right now, I don't think that there is a need to go further with regards to a traffic study or anything along those lines. I'll just make one final comment just to make sure everybody understands what I'm saying. At present, we have a 3.04 acre lot that has access to Hannaford Cove Road. We have a 27 acre lot that has access through the Broad Cove subdivision. We are, amend we are changing the Broad Cove subdivision and the Hannaford Cove subdivision in a way that I think fundamentally impacts not whatever Dr. Holt may plan to do now, but fundamentally impacts the traffic potential for those two subdivisions. And I think we need information on that in order for this application to be complete. And the other thing I guess I have to add is if this were Dr. Holt's only desire for himself and his heirs and assigns forever, then there are other ways to do this. He could simply, since he owns both parcels, he could simply take the lot line of lot four and move it back 50 feet or whatever he needs to do to make it sufficiently bigger to put his house on that high point. And if he really wanted to keep that land in farming forever and ever and ever, he could give a conservation easement on that land. He's not doing either thing, which makes me think that we really need to think about what's being preserved here for the future. And I think it's an issue of completeness. It sounds like I don't have a majority on the board here, but I just want to make absolutely clear what I'm saying. Well, let me see if I can focus the issue here because on completeness, it either is complete or it is not. And if right. we were to say it's not complete, you ha we have to advise the applicant what is required to make it complete. Yes. Can you articulate again, Elaine, what you had in mind on that? Yes. I would like a comparative assessment of what the potential traffic impact is on running tide road in the Broad Cove subdivision, which we're seeking to amend, and the traffic imp implications for the Berry subdivision and Hannaford Cove Road. And I think we need information about, I, I, I know at least from part of what we've heard from the public that at least a part of Hannaford Cove Road is only 13 feet wide. And that I think we need to look at that information. And we may conclude that actually, given all the traffic on Running Tide Road, this makes more sense from a traffic safety point of view um, and from an uh, access and visibility point of view, point is we don't have any of that information in front of us. So we're all speculating. But your assessment would be based on basically three lots, the ocean lot, the Wasserman lot, and the combined. And I also think it's interesting that the Wasserman lot has been configured in a way that completely blocks off the potential for this portion appended to lot four to continue to have the access that it presently has on running tide road. So it's just that the way it's set up raises red flags in my mind despite the best intentions of the present owner and perhaps his children. Okay, well, I, I think our, our issue, would the applicant like to add anything to this? Just a, a, well, a couple of... Uh, just before you start, just so you know, I think at this point, after you've been heard, the board is going to have to face and vote on the issue of whether or not it is complete. Okay. Correct. Okay. There's, there's, there's just one other slight problem. What's that? But this is a fairly lengthy document. You can't really study it in detail now, and it comes up against voting for completeness. So, you know, do we feel we ought to look at this for some time, or...? Well, that's something you can consider when we vote yeah. completely. Uh, yes. We, uh, first, I want to thank Mr. Egan for his comments. We, we have not seen the memo that you have. We do not have a copy of it, so I cannot address it. Um, 
just two clarifications. One is that there is an agreement with Wasserman. I'm sorry? There is an agreement with Wasserman. Right, that's referenced okay. in the materials. And, and, and secondly, um, he had mentioned that because the, four, the three acre subdivision lot and the acreage behind the subdivision lot were in common ownership, we don't have to worry about setback requirements. If that's the case, then I don't think we need to be here tonight. But that is not my understanding, given that they, there, is, there are two separate legal lots. That wasn't my point. My point was... No, I, I was addressing uh, Mr. Egan's point. Not oh, okay, Egan, Mr. Sorry. Egan's point of view. Uh, okay. <clears throat> addressing your point uh, regarding the impact on traffic, I've heard a lot of speculation about future development potential. Uh, those uh, are very interesting conversations to have, very interesting intellectual conversations to have. At some point, if Dr. Holt or any future owner of the land wishes to do a subdivision or any uh, such development, they will have to come back before you. Uh, that's one. Two, um, the, the, currently there is a uh, single family, uh, there's a potential for a single family residence on lot four. By creating additional acreage to increase the size of the lot, you still have the opportunity to build a single family residence. And so the traffic study shouldn't really necessarily focus on acreage, whether it's a three acre house lot or a 10 acre house lot. The fact is, in order to turn that into three or four houses, he has to come back before you and do a subdivision application. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is, if Dr. Holt, he has no intention of doing this, but if he wanted to, he could grant an easement to the, to the Berry lot uh, and do a subdivision of the back acreage. Removing the lot line does not somehow create an opportunity to develop the back acreage that does not currently exist. That potential is still there. Luckily, we have a, a farmer who has no intention of doing that. Uh, all he wants to do is uh, adjust a lot line or delete a, a lot line so that he can site his residence um, between the two parcels that he owns. Uh, I, I'm sorry, sir. Do you have something else you want to add? Because uh, we're still on completeness. We haven't gotten to the merits yet. So. Act, and that is uh, 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 the statement was made that uh, there's access to my land now from Jordan Farm Road. That's inaccurate. There is none. Uh, the only access is off Running Tide Road. Uh, and uh, the uh, other sta factual thing that the board should know is there is only uh, one party that has the right to use that tote road that runs the length of the property. And that is uh, the Duffets, who have a 1928 deed that allows them access from Two Lights Road to their cottage. No one else has the right to use that now. No one else does. When I sell the 10 acres on the ocean, there will be not just that 10 acres, but the washerman, and no one can go up and down that road forever. And furthermore, I didn't, I don't, not sure why the town planning office didn't say this, even if you wanted to develop another house off the running tide access road, you cannot. It's a dead end road. The town at this time will not allow any new construction of homes beyond the junction of Jordan Farm and Winding Way. There's no possibility of developing down okay, there. Thank you, there. Dr. Holt. We, we'd like to move on and handle this issue of uh, completeness, if you don't mind. Uh, if any members want to have, you know, 25 words or less of summary of your views. Um, if we've set, Joe. So I would prefer to see that lot four enlarged as part of the Berry subdivision. And I, I mean, it seems that can be decided after completeness. I would, it right. doesn't seem like it's a completeness yeah, issue. So. That's a matter of characterization. I, I think that's correct. Okay. Um, well, we can do this on, on an actual motion, or we can sort of take an informal poll. My, um, would you like a motion? I would like a motion. That would be fine. Motion for, for the board to consider 
be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of William S. Holt for amendments to the Barry sub subdivision located on Hannaford Cove Road and the Broad Cove subdivision located on Running Tide Road to amend lot lines be deemed complete. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Okay, uh, Joe, thank you. Uh, any dis further discussion on the seconded motion before we vote on it? Okay, we'll now call for a vote. All in favor, please indicate. One, two, three, four, five in favor. Opposed? Okay, the motion carried. And Henry, did you abstain? Sure. You didn't ask, but yeah. Okay. The motion of five in favor, one opposed, one abstain. The motion carries on completeness. Thank you. Okay, now we uh, maybe kind of a seamless transition to the merits of the application, which we may have <laughs> covered a bit already. Um, on the merits of the application, would the applicant like to add anything further before we open it for public comment? No, I think uh, the reasons, my reasons have been made quite clear. I'm puzzled by how I could possibly proceed if I can't sell the uh, 10 acres on the ocean without the, the approval of what we're asking. And yet I'm being asked to, uh, that the, told that this is incomplete uh, because I don't have a commitment to sell that. Uh, we do well, sir, have- Sir, we've, we've covered completeness. Your, your application is complete. Okay. Oh. You're good on that one. All right. Thank you. Uh, before I open it to the public, would the board like to make any comments or questions? I just wanted to ask one question that I think might help. Um, Dr. Holt's attorney said that this change in the lot line doesn't affect the developability of the what I'll call the back parcel off Hannaford Cove Road one way or the other. So my question is, would you be willing, instead of what you're proposing, to simply move the lot line of the 3.04 acres back, directly back, 50 feet or whatever is necessary for setback purposes to allow you to put your house where you want to put your house and not merge the two lots, not make that back lot part of the Hannaford Cove Road subdivision, which seems to me would allow you to build your house, a single house, just where you want it. And if you just want an easement for your agricultural land, you could give it to your agricultural land. And if you would be willing to do that, I think that would change the scenario. It certainly would change it in my mind, which is why I'm asking it before the public hearing. Can I amend that, Elaine? If he actually um, did merge the 3.04, that's lot four, with the back, but gave a conservation easement, would you allow that? If he could merge the two? That, that's, a, that's a separate question. I think they're really two separate questions, but I, th I think there are many alternatives actually to accomplish what you want to accomplish. You've chosen one. Victoria and I have suggested some others, and my question is, are you willing to consider those others in order to allow you to do what you want to do? And before you answer, I'm a little uncomfortable about making the applicant uh, commit to a particular use of the land when there seems to be no requirement or need to do so at this time. I, I don't understand why Okay, then, I, then I'll keep my original question. No, no. What the applicant says the applicant wants to do is be able to build a house on lot four in a more advantageous location. That's all they want to do on lot four. And I think that can be accomplished by simply moving the back setback. So, that, so let's we, stick, stick with that question. We haven't studied that possibility. But uh, it is certainly something we would be willing to look into um, and get back to you on. We're not opposed to the idea. The motivation is to be able to build uh, a house near the, the setback line. Um, and if we study it and, and get ourselves comfortable with it, that could be a solution we'd be willing to accept. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Jonathan. 
Well, ironically, as, as we sit here trying to, some, some of us are trying to think of situations where we could basically discourage development of this lot. I think in a way, by when the applicant is looking to make this into one lot, to merge one lot, by having him keep two separate lots, doesn't that make it easier for him to just sell off that second lot, have an easement through Hannaford Cove Road, and then development is almost more simple for him if he doesn't have, if he has two separate lots there. If he merges them into one lot and then somewhere down the road, either Dr. Holtz or theirs, or if he has to sell the land, wants to then subdivide that lot, then they're back in front of the planning board. So I don't I, agree with that assessment, but maybe we need to but hear I'm saying, well, I, public first. I yeah. think that's something that we might be kind of missing the, uh, uh, so I, I just, to me, I'm, I'm with, uh, with Peter when I think when we're asking the applicant, would you be willing to do this? Would you be willing to do that? We have to focus on what is in front of us. And what's in front of us is a proposal by Dr. Holt, which in my opinion is actually a very reasonable approach for him to take given the fact that he's owned this 27 acres for, I believe he said 28 years. Um, and back then, all it took was a handshake. Boy, have, times have changed with that, with, <laughs> with regards to that. Let me but uh, what, but my, my point is, is that I think we have to focus on what's in front of us. I, I personally am uncomfortable with asking an applicant to, on a whim, move back setback uh, lines or, or borders or allow a conservation easement along their property. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. It's not a whim. Let, let me move the, uh, <laughs> move the process along here and open the public portion of the comment. I'll repeat that if you would come up one at a time to the podium, give your name and address, and uh, you have three minutes, and, and please, please stick to it if you don't mind. Thank you. My name is Eileen Calico, and I live at 53 Hannaford Cove Road. And I think that I have owned property, I think, longer than most people. No, nope, I take that back. I've lived there for 35 years plus. Um, so I really respect the planning board and their decision making and the issues that you raise. But as a taxpayer, I would hope that you see your role as establishing public policy, not just responding to what's in front of you. And I really um, am disturbed with all due respect, that, that this has gotten characterized as, well, an answer to a question that's being raised immediately. Because no one is talking about, and I feel information has been withheld, about the fact that there is another cottage on Dr. Holt's land, the part that is part of the um, borders of the ocean. No one's mentioned that, except you just mentioned it at the end that no one has acknowledged the fact that the Wasserman property has not been purchased. That's in anticipation. And I feel that um, if you're developing public policy, then you need the information. And so far, I don't hear it all forthcoming except for desires, but not for facts. And I would appreciate your asking more about the facts. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Other members of the public uh, who would like to be heard? Yes, ma'am. Hi there. I'm Patty Morris. I live right across from, um, well, I live at 26 Hannaford Cove Road across the street from uh, the properties of interest here. Um, and I had had the same thought as Elaine, so as a member of the public, I wanted to make sure that was on record, that that was my um, comment that I had come here with, is if the same objective can be, I think that does go to the merits, if the same objective can be met without um, disturbing the sense of, of um, what's going to happen with this property in the future for people that are making decisions to live there as we have, 
then I think if there is a better solution that that should be considered and it should be put out there and if Dr. Holt's willing to look at it, it should go to whether there's a yay or nay on this current proposal. If he can simply move the line to meet his need of putting the house with proper setbacks and still overlook the vineyards, then we're all for that. Um, uh, I don't understand, I'm saying that knowing that I don't understand right now without further research whether the easement proposition then would be make it just as facile or less or more facile to do a development on the larger part of the parcel behind. But I do think that we need to realize that there could be other solutions to this that would make um, property owners like us uh, much more comfortable going forward. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, another, yes, thank you. My name is Susan LaTorre, and I own property at both 47 and 49 Hannaford Cove Road. And from the looks of the map, I think the Wassermans would end up being in a butter to, my, to me rather than Dr. Holt. Um, the only question I have, and I, I really don't know a lot about what you do as planning board, but it seems to me that everything I researched um, about this project um, there was nothing about having the Wasserman, um, you know, take part of it, having a, um, a parcel on the ocean be sold. But I'm wondering, how can you make a decision when there's been no sale of Dr. Holt's land that he doesn't want to keep, you know, that he wants to sell? Because, you know, it's kind of a pig in a poke, I think, is the way my grandfather would have said it. You have to deal with facts. And it seems like we don't really have all the facts. I really respect Dr. Holt for his intention to keep, you know, the vineyard and everything. I think it's wonderful. But I think we're kind of putting the cart before the horse, for another saying. At any rate, I, I, I like what uh, Elaine said, because you do have to consider the facts. And the fact is that Hannaford Cove Road is a dangerous road. There's not hardly enough room for two cars to pass. We have a lot of walkers that stray from the, from the Greenbelt Trails and come down Hannaford Cove Road. We have a lot of bicycles. And there's a lot of little children on our road now, too. Mine are all grown and gone. But I would just really hope that you would deal with the concrete facts and maybe have them go away and come back you know, when it's final. If he wants to build his house, he can do that now. You know, and, and what you're offering him to move the boundary and then deal with the rest of it after. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, any more members of the public? There being none, we'll close the public. Oh, Ms. Regan. <coughs> yeah, uh, after Mr. Regan is done, is any, you, okay, we have two, but. It's a big issue uh, that you have before you. There were nine acres and four lots in the very subdivision that w the planning board reviewed with great detail, reviewing all 23 criteria. In this case, you're looking at the same 23 criteria, according to uh, the plan planner's uh, uh, statement to you, of which 10 are asked to be waived. The others, almost all of them, are responded to by mere conclusory statements that they've been met. Uh, so that's, that's one thought here. You gave the owners of the four lots in the Berry subdivision a great deal of attention about four lots in nine acres. Now you're kind of moving fast, I think, too fast, to amend that very well-founded subdivision plan going from four lots, nine acres, to four lots and 29 acres, or four lots and 14 acres, and the criteria that you applied to the four lots should be applied to all of the additional acres that you were appending to it, and I think if you don't, that's a big issue. The other thing I want to say is that in my presentation that I wish I could have gotten to you earlier, um, this covenant in Dr. Holt's deed, and I believe in the other three property owners' deed, refers to uh, the planning, the, the subdivision plan restrictions, covenants, et cetera, as a covenant running with the land. 
and that any attempt to violate the restrictions or the provisions of the plan at that time, implicitly, can be enforced or prohibited, proscribed, by process of law, by the three other property owners or perhaps others. And so when you, gave, when you, when you found that there was uh, uh, a uh, sufficiency of the, of the file or whatever you call it there, I think, this, I think you really missed this part because until Dr. Holt uh, responds adequately to the concerns of the three other property owners who bought into a well-planned, well-defined subdivision that is a covenant running with the land, this application is not complete. And I think there's some time, some time could be given to enable Dr. Holt and the three other landowners in his subdivision to come to agreement about how this property can be developed properly. I had, I, he's got the best of intentions. He's been an excellent neighbor to me. But this application is not complete, and it's premature. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Regan. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Jennifer Bailey. I live at 30 Hannaford Cove Road, so that is um, right in front of lot four. I think first I have a question um, on the deeming of completeness. I, I just don't understand if actually the Barry subdivision, I, I'm not, it's not about completeness. It's a, this is, goes to my question. Um, what is lot four and the extended parcel included in the Barry subdivision covenants or not? Is it Mr. Chalot had talked about that it would be best if it was. Is it or not? Well, it's not we can't give you a definitive that, answer. That's not in the completeness? Well, no, completeness is over. That's, we've, we've passed that one. The, the whole issue of, of covenants running with the land that Mr. Egan has raised, okay. those covenants will continue to run with the land with respect to that parcel, if that's your question. OK. It wasn't exactly, but maybe you answered it uh, otherwise. Um, I would just say that I strongly support it being, if the lot line is dissolved and there is this larger parcel, that it is included in the Barry subdivision for all the reasons that have been mentioned, that the planning board put a lot of time and attention into what those um, 23 covenants, et cetera, should be. And I hope they would be respected and not dissolved because they're really protective of all of us on that road. And I uh, thank you very much, um, Elaine, for caring about the future development because you are a planning board, not a present board, and it does matter um, part of the attractability of this town and why that Hanford Cove Road is now an explosion of young families as they hope to be there for a long time. And what may happen in the future um, does matter to all of us, and I know this town cares a lot about preserving the greatness that it is. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am. And if there are no other members of the public who want to be heard, we'll close. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Hi, my name is Sherry Flaherty. I live on Running Tide Road, uh, nine, number nine Running Tide Road. My only concern would be, since the Wasserman property uh, parcel has not been completed, the purchase, um, that somehow, you know, we like living down at the end of the road where either you're either lost or you live there. Um, you know, I have small children and, you know, people, I don't want to have the idea of some day a road coming through. Like Elaine said, you know, if, if that Wasserman uh, property isn't complete and sometime a road could come through there and, and potentially put more traffic through Running Tide Road, that would be a concern of mine. Thank you. Thank you. Did I see somebody else in the back? Yes, ma'am. I'm Shirley Maxwell and my mom shook his hand in 1987 and I couldn't ask for a better person my mother chose right and everybody seems to want to have open space and da, da, da. well you know what that guy wants open space he's a good guy and I just want you all to know that he's been the best so that's all I wanted to say thank you thank you uh, yes ma'am My name is Tana Lenhart. I live at number 48, Hannaford Cove Road, and I'm, this is the first time I've attended such a gathering. 
Uh, I would like to know what the time frame is now that you have decided that the application is complete. What happens next? And how will folks such as myself on Hannaford Cove Road know what's in the works or what will happen or what's being thought of or planned or um, uh, I was grateful that there was a note that came out um, talking about this event but um, I need to know more because now that the application is complete uh, things will be moving forward and uh, I, I certainly have concerns about the traffic on Hannaford Cove Road and I would certainly want just one house with maybe not too many cars. Um, good. Okay. Good. But you know, it's it's a very quiet road and a very small road, and it sure is nice to live on it. And um, but other questions that came up, you know, when you combine the lot number four with uh, with the the acreage behind it for the vineyard. Um, you're right about future use of that land, and there are, there are lots of um, considerations. And I assume that the planning board would consider them. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Oh, ma'am, your, your question, you will know at the end of this meeting what the board decides tonight which could be to uh, accept the application or deny it or table it for further attention at a later meeting. And you can find on the town's website when this will be scheduled for further so consideration. For or you can, you can contact Maureen and she'll be happy to tell you. So for clarification, the application is complete. We voted so that it is you've complete. already agreed upon that. And now, uh, now you will decide what? To, on the merits of the application, either to accept it or to reject it or to put it off to another meeting for... So now you really do have to decide whether or not it's better to stay with the Barry... Um, uh, yeah, Ma'am, we, we haven't gotten there yet. We, we'll, we'll, we'll do something tonight. You'll have to wait and see what that is. We haven't had a chance to continue our... Discussion. But do you go away and talk about this again, and then is that decision made later? <laughs> Can't it's all done. Are you going to talk yeah. about it right yeah. now? And the only decision, excuse me, Peter, any decision this board makes will be done here, yeah. in front of all of you and on camera. Right. We no. don't know. Not necessarily. Uh, that's, stay tuned. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right. I guess. Uh, any other members can. of the public who would like to be heard? Okay, there being none, I'll now close the public uh, comment period on the considering the merits of the application. Would the applicant's council like to add something at this point? One concluding comment, and I will keep my mouth shut. And I want to thank the members of the public for showing up and expressing their concerns, which I think are valid concerns and concerns that all of us appreciate living in various communities. Uh, the one part that puzzles me and that I don't understand is there seems to be the perception that if there is one, let's call it 15 acre lot, the development potential is greater than if there is a three acre lot and a 12 acre lot. And I'm not sure I understand how their opposition to Dr. Holt's proposal addresses their concern. Uh, thank you. Uh, board member. With the board's permission. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about why this is coming forward now. Why don't the lots be sold first? They can't be sold first. Right. Um, the, the applicant actually spent a lot of time meeting with um, the code enforcement officer and I evaluating various alternatives. And I want to point out that um, in order to submit an application, you have to demonstrate right title or interest in the property before you. So there was no way 
that this applicant could bring forward this application with a proposal to merge land into the Wasserman lot without the permission of the Wassermans. And I see Mrs. Wasserman sitting in the back there. So in the application, there's a letter dated July 23, 2015, that says, Dear Ms. O'Mara, this letter serves as my permission for William and Mary Jean Holt to bring forward in a proposal they are submitting to the planning board in the near future a proposed change to the title for my current property at 3 Running Tide Road, Cape Elizabeth, Maine, that would extend my property line to include additional land we hope to purchase from them in the coming months. So they are proposing to merge property into a subdivision lot. They could try, and in fact they tried, to actually just buy the land from Dr. Holt as a separate lot. And the discussion with the code officer was that if they did that, and I think if you look at the lot, and maybe John could get it up on the screen, if they just purchased the lot separately from Dr. Holt, they would be creating an illegal lot because the lot would not have frontage on a town accepted road. And it needs a passport for ACP. <laughs> Nobody heard <How> secure. <laughs> <laughs> so the co-enforcement officer told them, no, you cannot execute a separate deed to sell this land to the Wassermans because the lot, the moment you sell it, does not have frontage on a town accepted road. We've actually had some problems with that kind of transfer over the past decade and uh, we're trying to avoid creating those, those problems in the waiting in the wings kind of situation. So the next option was for the Wassermans to actually bring it forward as a separate lot and get a private access way permit. The Wassermans did not want to do that. Uh, so the third option was to just merge this land into their existing lot. And because their existing lot is part of an approved subdivision, you cannot change your lot lines without going back to the planning board. So that's why that particular lot is here and why you can't go ahead with any sale of land before it comes before the planning board. And then you have the same situation with lot four. Um, lot four has a building envelope and it has a note that says you can't do things outside the building envelope because Dr. Holt owns both building lot four and the land behind it. He is asking to merge the two lots to maximize his flexibility on where he can put his lot, or his house. But nevertheless, he has created a, he is proposing for the board to consider a new building envelope that would replace the building envelope that's currently approved for lot four. So I don't know if John wants to, to show that. But that building envelope does not encompass the entire merged lot. It, in, it excludes certain areas. And the, the Wasserman lot, the same thing. A new building envelope has been shown for the new and expanded Wasserman lot that includes all of the land that's in the existing lot on Running Tide Road, plus most of the land that's in the new lot. That building envelope does not include the buffer from the one from the RP1 wetland. So they can't legally move ahead with this in terms of sales without coming to the planning board first. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. So the Wassermans, if they wanted to put in an access road and build a second lot back there, a build a house back there. Mm -hmm. They have to come to the planning. Uh, th I mean, based on, t and, you know, the future, we don't know what the future holds, but we've actually looked at a couple of options. The Wassermans expressed an interest in making sure that this lot could hold its value for the future. So they want to keep their options open. Uh, and that would mean that to make that lot buildable, we believe right now what you would have to do is come to the planning board for a private access way permit in order to cut off a back lot, and the board is very familiar with how you review private access ways, so I'm not going to go, go through that with you. And other questions I can help you with? Okay, uh, further discussion by the board, Elaine? Maureen, just following up on the point you just made, obviously you and the Wassermans have had some discussion about the developability of the back lot. That's right. Would that back lot remain developable if Dr. Holt retained with his property um, a passageway sufficient to continue to allow access from the vineyard parcel, I'll call it, um, out to the existing access points 
on Running Tide Road. The reason I said Jordan Farm Road is I can't tell from this map where those two roads differentiate. So I guess it's guess they're both just Running Tide Road. So if a passageway, the, the way this is done, it totally cuts off one portion of the Holt land from any potential access other than Hannaford Cove Road. So could a corridor be retained along the back of the Wasserman lot and still preserve development potential, let's say the words and not yes. hide them, and still preserve development potential on that there, lot? There is this um, interesting road, private road, um, maybe John. Well, the tote road seems to be in the wrong place. But I'm not talking. You don't want to move it because of all the wetlands. That's ah. what you want to be careful about. There is this uh, tote road that seems to run from the ocean to Two Lights Road. And I guess potentially if, the, if that would address your concern about preserving mm -hmm. other options for access, that might be the, the thing you want to look at. Um, the other thing, the other, I, underst I do think I understand your concern with maximizing options. And normally I'm a big maximizing options. Um, in this case, I haven't raised it with the board because the dead end road condition um, for this subdivision starts at the lot just behind the Wasserman lot. So having access solely from Running Tide Road for any of this property for the future doesn't solve any problems. Okay, I think it would be very helpful if the planning board had in front of us what apparently is existing town policy on Running Tide Road and additional access to Running Tide Road. People have talked about that tonight saying there can't be any. We don't have any. Your application doesn't include any information that confirms that or, or doesn't confirm it. I think it's important that we have that information so we can consider whether that would make more sense. So my understanding is what you're looking for is the applicant to add something to the plan that identifies the point where the road is more than 2,000 feet long and where there's more than 20 homes on a dead end road. I, you may be right on that. We weren't, that issue was not presented, so whether those are all the criteria I would want to have addressed or not, I don't know because the issue was never raised and I haven't had a chance to look at it. Uh, number one, that road, uh, there's only one party that has access, legal right to use that road right now, and that uh, is yeah, the, the Duffets. You're talking about the Tote Road? The, the Tote Road. Right. The, the Duffet family, period. Nobody else has the right to use it. Secondly, the purchase and sale agreement that we have drafted uh, and proposed to sign upon planning board approval with the Washermans, I am giving up any right to that tote road in the middle. I am getting rid of it because I don't want traffic on that road. And what about the other people who have access to it all the way to Two Lights Road? There are three, nobody, the Duffets only. But you can't give up road. their access. I, that's correct. You have to have Mr. Duffett come and talk to you, but that exists and it's existed since 1928, so you can't right. do anything about it. Yes. I'm not sure the, the current agreement with the Wassermans, uh, the way it addresses that private road, but, but the, the tote road, I think, is sort of outside of the scope of what we're really discussing. It's a, it's a private road. It's not a public way, and whatever rights exist in it are entirely private. Um, I understand your concern to be that the area shown in blue uh, would lose access off of running tide road. Is that correct? Correct. Um, right now, by right, if you didn't have three lots, um, Dr. Holt could split his lot in half, and he could accomplish your concern without ever coming before the planning board. By right, he could take the 20 acres up top, and he could do a single division, um, give himself an easement over lot four, and you would create a lot that had no access off of Running Tide Road. The only reason that we're here today is because we're act asking to amend certain subdivision plans. But I, I understand your concern, but we, it, it exceeds the scope, in, in my opinion, of what we're trying to do, uh, because we, we could do that. 
It may exceed the scope of what you're trying to do, but it doesn't exceed the scope of the legal implications of the subdivision changes you're requesting. I, I would just simply say that it is my intention not to have traffic in and out. It's been my purpose from the beginning to stop the access, which frankly, you should worry about right now. I own 30 acres and I own lot number four. We could connect the dots. I refuse to. I'm selling to the Wassermans in part to do it, and as soon as we have approval, the oceanfront property is going on the market, and uh, the intent will be to cut off any access from running tide to Hannaford Cove forever by having three separate deeds in the way. I'm with you 100 percent. Let me say we, we have, uh, we've had a lot of valuable input from the public, <clears throat> from the applicant and the board. It sounds to me like the applicant and his counsel and, and uh, Mitchell Associates are going to be thinking about a few of the points raised, particularly with respect to lot four and the vineyard parcel, and get back to us. Is that, is that fair? You, I, I believe earlier in the discussion tonight, um, there were some points made. Elaine had a couple of questions for you, and you said you wanted to caucus later, think about it, perhaps come back with a proposal that would meet Elaine's points as well as some of the public's point. Uh, would it make sense to defer further discussion on this application to a subsequent meeting so you folks could have a chance to? Um, uh, well, I understand where you're coming from. I, I'm puzzled. I'm very sorry that I proposed moving the bot line in the first place uh, uh, because we can put a house 20 feet away. And uh, if that's what it takes to solve this thing, we've already said we'd think about uh, it. I can cite a house without going over the property line. I'm very sorry. As I said to uh, the board a moment ago, my intention is precisely what Elaine has said and the board. I'm doing all of this to get some money from the oceanfront and to forever prevent this kind of traffic. There will be precisely two cars going up and down Running Hyde Road. The uh, oceanfront home, uh, I mean, uh, going up and down Hannaford Cove. The oceanfront lot, as I understand from our extensive negotiations with Marine, you cannot build anything on it until there is a second access in because it becomes a dead end road at the junction of Jordan Farm, winding way, and running tide. Nothing can be built. So that oceanfront property will be a 10-acre estate, completely unbuildable until the town changes its uh, rules. So uh, I mean, this is what is making this so difficult for me. I, I've intended to have it come out one, two, three, no access, and building a nice house to live in. And I'm sorry that all the rest of this is happening. No, I, I hear you, Dr. Holt. I was, just, I was maybe n not trying to put words in your mouth, but I. If, if you or your counsel wanted to think more about what you've heard tonight and come back with some additional proposals, we would be happy to put it off for another session. If you want to have a vote up or down on your application tonight, you're entitled to it. Uh, I think the desired application has been submitted, and uh, we would uh, appreciate the board's consideration. Further discussion by the board? Elaine. I would like to site walk. You like site walk? I would like to site walk. I'd like to take a look at the three parcels, take a look at the various road access points. So I don't know if, if anyone else would, but I very much would like a site walk. Uh, I think any time somebody wants to site walk, we ought to have it. You folks? Um, we normally do like to take site walks. Yep. I think on every project we've ever done, we've, we've yep. been out there in the cold, the heat. So I would like a site walk. Um, I know this was a, a public hearing and we could have voted on this tonight, but if we do have a site walk, that would obviously postpone this till next month, I believe, and maybe um, that time for consideration that you've spoken of for other options might because um, I would have to say I don't have the concerns that Elaine has. Um, I feel, um, and I'm always, I agree, we always look long term. We always look at possibilities. 
And I, I think this is clear. And, and as far as how many more houses and a traffic count, I look at, you know, I look at Hanford Road, and I see right across the street uh, from um, not Mr. Egan, but another uh, empty lot, 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 empty lot. Where are you? And so. No, no, those lots are. Okay. That's why we need a site walk. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, then I would like to see what's on all those lots. Too. Right. I think that's critical. Yeah. Let's, let's well, take this. With all due respect to Eileen, uh, Eileen and uh, Victoria, I don't see that there's a need for a site walk. Um, I think that Dr. Holt has put in a lot of time into this proposal, and I think for 28 years his reputation precedes him that he's been a fantastic neighbor to everybody around him. I take him at his word, just like 28 years ago, he was taken at his word that he's going to do what he's proposing. So personally, I don't think that there's a need for a site walk to see basically where an invisible line would simply disappear. Anybody else like to be heard? Uh, I personally would add something along Jonathan's line. I think this is a fairly minor, modest, and benign proposal. And all the concerns about what might be done in the future would be dealt with in the future uh, upon any specific development proposal being made. So, But at the same time, I, I think a site walk is always a good idea. This will create a time for you folks to sit back and think about whether you want to modify your proposal at all and uh, uh, ask for an expression of, of in favor of site walk. Carol, do you have a comment? Yeah, I have another comment. Um, it is not the normal practice. We do it occasionally to uh, vote on completeness and finalize the, the uh, application in the same night. It's a commonly completeness one meeting, the uh, voting on the application in a subsequent meeting. I think there's been a lot of information thrown out here, and there's been a lot said about covenants that go with the land and, and notes that need to be added to the plan. And I, for the most part, agree with Jonathan and Peter, I, I, I think we're make, we are made this much bigger than its original intention. But I would be in favor of a site walk. I think it needs another month for people to digest all of the information and for them to have time to take in what they've heard tonight and see if they want to make modifications. So I, that's where I stand. Thank you. Uh, just an informal show of reaction on a site walk in favor. Okay, so there are enough people. Let's we'll schedule a site walk. Um, I have ahead. one more comment when sure. when you're done. Okay, uh, site walk, um, Dr. Holt. We would want you to be there to hold our hands and show us the property. Okay. Um, do we traditionally? tried to do it early morning. Uh, weekends are not great. Uh, uh -oh, not this summer. Friday, is that? I can't, can't no. Uh, okay. Um, next Monday? Can't do it. I can't do it for at least a week. Yeah. Starting when? Starting Friday. Starting Friday. Next Friday? This Friday. So could you do next Friday? No. Nope. How about Monday the 31st? Monday the 31st work for folks. Um, seven Maureen, three. how does that fit in with the deadlines for next proposals? What's the, what's the latest we can do it and still give them time to respond? Uh, let's see. The next meeting of the board would be September 15th, and the deadline for that is August 28th. Oops. I could do this Saturday. Which Saturday? The 22nd. This coming Saturday. Oh, I can't do it this Saturday. I could do it next yeah. Saturday. Uh, Monday you can't. Uh, any weekdays next week? Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday? My coverage is gone for a week. I can't. I can't leave. So. Um, how about the 31st? Monday, uh, August 31st, 7:30. Is that too early? 7:30, good. Dr. Holt, are you an early riser? Yeah, what's I, 
I'm go I'll make it work for you. You make it work. I'll make it work. We'll figure it out. Okay. We'll with, with the board's permission, I'll make it work. So yeah. extend the deadline a couple days? We'll try for the next day. I'd so rather meet at the Hannaford Cove mm -hmm. Ramp because it's a long ride down to the end of running tide. <laughs> Can I add one comment here, Maureen? I'd really like to, if we can't extend the application deadline, a sufficient amount of time for the input from the site block to be reflected in what we receive, I'm not quite sure the point. My concern is that <laughs> there are people who will come into the office and be very critical of the application not being in by the standard deadline. Right. So I would like to provide the applicant with a little bit more time and I would like to do that with the permission of the planning board. So how many, how many hours after the site walk is the applicant going to have before the submission is what due? What I would like to do, I mean, I have worked with this applicant's representative in the right. past. He tends to have the plans ready to go. I'm looking at John and thinking that um, you could probably turn around the plans in 24 hours from the deadline of the so if you have a site walk on Monday the 31st, I could get plans in by the following end of day Tuesday, probably. Really? If it's going to create too much of a hardship for them, hold the site walk without me. I'm, I'm looking at the applicant's representative and he's I'm not well, seeing a lot of angst. It seems like we can make this deadline work. I just am asking for the public to understand that if they come in Monday morning at 9 o'clock and say, where are the plans, the answer is they'll be here at the end uh, of the let me, let me just uh, uh, amend what I just said. The, the problem is that if, if we are going to change any of the lot lines after the site visit, that's going to take uh, probably three or four days to come up with the meets and bounds, the calculations, um, the stamp on the plan, and all of that so that it really doesn't uh, I can't turn it around that quickly if we're going to change what so is, is Caroline the, the only, walk without me yeah is Caroline the only person who uh, can't yeah. do it Monday the 24th no I, I'm no, sorry you, you what, can't. what's the date Monday the 24th oh, of August I, I it, either, but that's okay go can't. without me go without me all right so we'd have a quorum uh, which day is that Monday August is that 24th. this coming Monday a week for, uh, yes the coming Monday, coming Monday. yeah, Monday. yeah. So, Henry, you can make it? Yeah. Elaine? What time How about Tuesday? <laughs> what time? What? <laughs> Tuesday That's work? the 25th. Yeah, how about Tuesday the 25th? It can't be Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we're busy people. Let's go back to Monday. Can you guys make it? Monday. You three, you're all good? Uh, Caroline can't. Henry, I. That's five. Elaine, you're on the fence? Well, at present, I can't. But okay, okay well, five, five will do it, but you, you seem to be, be the major interest person about the site walk, so maybe we ought to make sure you can be there. Um, what else? Tuesday you can do it? Can she do the Friday the 21st? No, no. Not, not this coming Friday. How about, uh, how about I the, have weekend plans. How about, <laughs> how about the 25th? The 25th? Which is Tuesday. what day? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. But Joe said he can't I do it can't. Tuesday. If you can go, I can't. I can't. Well, we, that doesn't work. Can we do it later on Monday? Wednesday the 26th. Wednesday the 26th. I could do Wednesday the 26th. Ah. Uh, I can do that. Oh, I see nodding heads. Okay, we're looking good. Wednesday. Jonathan's looking at his cow. Yeah. Um, if, I'll try to make it work. All right. I have an appointment at 10 o'clock, so. No, 7.30 will be, All right. we do be fast site watch on. We do, a, we trot, we run. Can, um, Peter, can we make sure that you put on record Sorry? for the public to know that the smoke likely will be on the agenda next well, month down the road. in case it, they want to? Yeah, the, the members of the public, this will probably be on the agenda for next month's regular meeting, so you'll have a chance to come back and hear how things are going. Victoria. Uh, before we wrap up this meeting, um, I did have a question about um, mapping of the wetlands. Before um, we get there, mm -hmm, yep. just to, to close the loop on the site walk, we're meeting where? Hannaford Cove Road. Hannaford Cove Road. You're, you're meeting along Lot 4 of Hannaford Cove Road. Okay. At 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday, August 26th. Okay. And then do we have the opportunity also to go to Jordan Cove Road? I don't know how passable that. You can walk the entire way. We can walk the whole way? Okay. Great. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> I'll walk it. Okay. We take long. A nice walk. Okay, and that's at uh, seven thirty. We said. Or me, Willie. And and I will send a note to the planning board reminding you of this, and it'll also be posted on the town's calendar on the town's website. Okay, that's. I think we're. Uh, uh, the public may attend. The public is not allowed to speak, but you're. It, it's. Yes, you're. You're. You're certainly permitted to be there. Uh, you, we'll ask you to stay in the group and it'll be under the direction of the property owner, so we're not wondering all about the countryside. Okay. Maureen, is that correct? I thought the public could address questions to the chair on a limited scope of issues. Right, and I'm sure that at the site walk, oh. you will begin the site walk with instructions. Yes, we will, and, but I don't... I, 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 I don't. It, limited questions about the physical characteristics of the site. Well, that limits with through the by, chair by the board through the chair. Because we normally take comments, uh, questions from the public. You, ha you, ha they can. You have the opportunity to recognize people. Okay. But it's not an opportunity to testify about the project. Right. This, this is the, for so we can acquaint ourselves with the physical surroundings. This won't be an opportunity to express your approval or disapproval of what's going on. Okay. Victoria. All right. This is um, addressed to the rest of the board because um, the RP2 wetland boundaries were not field determined by Al Frick, which he noted in his letter from December 2014. Can you speak a little more loudly? They're not what by Al Frick? So the RP2 wetland boundaries were not field determined by oh. Al Frick. Now, this is only a concern to me because the building envelope appears to be laid out based on the boundaries of the RP2 wetland. So I, right now, do not feel comfortable giving a final approval to the building envelope based on RP2 wetland edges that have been undetermined by a soil scientist. And I would like to ask the rest of the board if that is a concern or a consideration. So I'm just looking for input from the rest of the board. Isn't there a prior envelope already approved um, from the Barry subdivision? On a lot number four. But the lot has the proposed envelope has expanded, and typically when we have building envelopes, we don't include wetland areas within the building envelope. I absolutely agree with Victoria, and and again, given what we've heard tonight, it seems to me that the building envelope need be no larger than necessary for the single residents with the discussion as to what can happen outside of the building envelope to include agricultural activity, which is what's going on there. So I, I, I agree with you both for wetland purposes and because actually we're only approving a building envelope for the purposes of the single residence. And, and I would say that the same thing, I believe the same issue comes up on the other lot, the Wasserman lot, in that we're really not approving a building envelope for that new lot because we haven't had any opportunity to consider appropriate development of that new parcel. So it seems to me there's really no basis for the existing expansion of the building envelope adjacent to the Wasserman lot, that that building envelope on the new portion of the lot could be determined if and when there is in front of us an actual proposal to develop that lot but I would want to take a look at the terrain when we're out there and figure out what makes sense as a, as a pertinent to the existing residence on the Wasserman lot and what makes sense as a pertinent to a single residence on current lot four. Yeah, current lot four. And that expands a little bit. You're looking for a single lot on lot four, and I'm just saying that Alfred noted in his 2014 letter he has not feel determined and the building envelope is based on where the RP2 wetlands begin and, and end, which has not been determined. So, so are, you, are you concerned even the current envelope on that lot? Uh, no. It, the, the, the last planning board, which I was on and you were on at that time, we okayed that. So no, I, I would just say, but they're going to have to map that anyways to get the rest of the building envelope. I mean, it just, it just kind of falls into it. 
you know, John Mitchell has But enough, anyways, uh, has I'm just wondering what the rest of the... Comments. I was wondering what the rest of the board, I mean, if it's just myself and Elaine, then there's no need for John to go further. I agree with Elaine. Yeah, no, does John Mitchell have enough information from your respective comments to meet them with a revised plan? Well, I don't know. Is the board asking us to have Al Frick go out and map the RP to wetlands? I mean, there are, there are no impacts to there are no proposed impacts to the wetlands. So we had them go out and just do our P1 wetlands because that has the setback associated with it. I, and which I, yes, you're right, that RP1 had to be mapped out because, right, 250 foot setback, right. you had right. to. Right, but with the RP2, current proposal. With the RP2, right, there's very limited what you'd have to do and you'd have to get a resource permit, which is not before us. Right. The point would be is that the building envelope appears to be drawn around an RP2 wetland. But if Al Frick has not said, well, this is actually where, he hasn't determined those outlines, and how can the building envelope be laid down on something that hasn't been determined? Victoria Marie has a partial comment. I guess in the interest of trying to give the applicant better direction, um, I'm wondering if the majority of the board wants to kind of say that you would like the applicant to look at the building envelopes and make them more conservative in terms of size, one, and two, at least within the area of the building envelopes, verify that there are no RP2 wetlands within those building envelopes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Here. yes to which, both? Yes, with both. So essentially that gives you a choice. If you want to expand the building envelopes, then you have to do a wetland study to encompass the expanded building envelopes and the immediate surroundings. If you choose to keep the building envelopes as they are, then you don't need to do those additional studies. Right. Or you come up with a smaller envelope than you are proposing right now and you do less wetlands. Exactly. Right. So that's... No, we, we choose the latter of that. And that will be on the new plat, showing the new building envelope. Cause yes. Okay. Yep. And then I believe I did hear, um, now I forget which individual said yes, might have been you, John, to um, all lots served by public water and private we'll sewer. Put those notes and on. right, yep. that's note number eight, number 11, if you want to go back. Right. Okay. We'll do that. John, can I clarify something? I think you do. If you want to do what Dr. Hold is trying to do, which I don't think we're objecting to, and that is put his property on the high point, I think you will need to amend the building envelope for lot four. I think you're going to need to push it back. To the extent, looks to me, you're pushing it back going uphill. So you would just need to provide enough wetland details so you could push back that building envelope on lot four so you can put the house where you want to put it. Because my sense is that none of the RP2 wetland has been mapped beyond, well, I don't know if it was mapped within the Hannaford, within the Berry subdivision. No, it was. Okay, we, we so used. you only need to map it sufficiently for the extended part of the building envelope that you're trying to append to lot four of the Berry subdivision. It goes uphill, exactly. So you just need to include a statement to that effect. Right. So I don't think you're going to need to spend much more than a few dollars to get that done, but nonetheless, it needs to happen. Well, let's let's move this along, John. You have enough to work we're, with. For we're all set. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to table further consideration of this uh, application until the public uh, meeting on September 15th. And. I'll make motion. Okay, Lane, second. Um, now wait a second. We don't even have that. We don't have the, motion in front of us. Okay. He just made you one. So. I just, I just. Oh, you just made it. I second what you just said. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion on the uh, seconded motion? All in favor? Okay. Uh, opposed. The motion carries unanimously. Nope. And we had one. We have wait, John, the, one, Jonathan. Oh, I just I opposed that. Opposed it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. For the record. 
Put it up. One, all in favor but one who's against and so we are. Okay, and we have a site walk uh, scheduled. So with that, Dr. Holt, thank you and your team for coming. Thanks, members of the public, for your input. We appreciate it. Um, would you folks, uh, would you, ah, Henry, stop thinking about it. Uh, would you folks please uh, move, have your conversation? <laughs> so you don't have any. I have a perfect solution, but I wasn't asked. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a junkie for this kind of stuff. A new pass? Maybe a conservation Thank you, uh, Chris Franklin, Executive Director at the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. We're back before you <clears throat> hoping to complete a project that we started with the acquisition at Robinson Woods II, uh, which entailed improvements to uh, an existing trail that we're now um, two years into, or a year and a half into utilizing the trail, realizing it has some soft spots um, that we want to keep from eroding uh, by the installation of some bog bridging. So these are really uh, projects that are designed to uh, protect the natural resources that the, the properties were required to achieve. Um, so I'm glad to uh, field any questions, but uh, if you'd like a short proposal, I'm glad to uh, Go, go through some maps and slides for you. That would be helpful. Okay, great. <clears throat> yep. So uh, currently, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust owns 145 acres off of Shore Road, uh, collectively known as the Robinson Woods Properties. These were acquired through private funding, through state funding, and contributions from the town of Cape Elizabeth. Um, the, let me get that pointer going here. Robinson Woods One acquired uh, around 2002-2003, and then the Robinson Woods Two parcel uh, completed in 2012. Um, this section here, the, the sort of the pink line, was the new trail that we opened, and this is the focus of most of the work that we're proposing tonight. Again, the same properties uh, showing the existing trails. Um, the portions that we've GPSed out in the field in terms of where we'd like to install the bog bridging. Um, there's another one more bog bridging piece up in the Robinson Woods parcel. Um, and then there's some what we're calling vernal pool fencing. It's really a visual barrier to keep 
<clears throat> people and dogs from wandering into these vernal pools that are essential breeding habitat for woodland amphibians, the salamanders and wood frogs. Um, the representative sample of from Robinson Woods 2 of one of the sections where the trail corridor is well established, but uh, this was taken um, probably in early June when things were still a bit wet. It's set up a little bit more. You don't see any mud right now. But when you have these types of trail conditions with multiple users on them, people tend to uh, divert off the narrow trail corridor and try and find hard ground on either side and this of course instead of having a two foot wide corridor all of a sudden you have a five and then a six and then a ten foot wide corridor and so because this area is in such a sensitive area near within the RP1 um, buffer we really want to minimize our impact and when we installed this trail we utilized an existing trail system um, exi that needed improvement as opposed to building a new trail. So um, that's the representative sample. This is a sample of uh, one of the vernal pools in Robinson Woods. Um, and again, you can see the trail corridor uh, in this section goes right along past the vernal pool. And you know, if dogs and people don't go into the pools very often, but if uh, dogs go into the pools, they can dislodge the egg masses from the branches. And so we have signage that's been up previously. These uh, split rail fences are secured just by a simple fiberglass shaft that's um, probably half an inch in diameter that's hammered into the ground and then the recessed into these pine uh, posts that are 18 inches uh, tall. And each of these segments, I believe, is five feet long. So these are very low profile, but really a visual barrier. Um, not impacting the ability of wildlife to utilize the resource in any way. Uh, <clears throat> again, you know, the, this is just an aerial shot to show the extent of the five acres of standing water that's fed by two streams within Robinson Woods too, and highlighting again those same areas where we're going to be doing the bog bridging. So you can see the proximity to the pond is quite close. Um, so again, a, a very sensitive area that we want to minimize impact on by keeping the trail, you know, and one of the things that you'll run into if the trails start getting torn up too much is erosion and then you can get siltation into the water. We want to preserve the water quality there as much as possible, so elevating uh, boardwalks for people to walk on is another way to protect the resource. Uh, two foot count contour lines again sort of showing uh, that these are uh, placed in an area that where there are sort of steep slopes and uh, adjoining neighbors wanting to sort of uh, be close and you know maintain that trail corridor. Uh, a little more detail on the vernal pools with the uh, Robinson Woods Bog Bridge here, the fencing here, and the other fencing where the photograph you had seen before is in this area. Materials and uh, installation. This is an example of the type of boardwalk we've been doing with two by 10 treads. Uh, so 10 inches wide on each tread, uh, cumulatively 30 inches wide. These are set on four by four risers um, that run perpendicular to the to the treads and are screwed together for stability. Um, there was a recommendation from the Conservation Commission that we put ramps at either end of the, the bridging just so that bikers or walkers, um, you know, so eliminate sort of the hazard of having to step up onto these. So they're typically uh, four inches off the ground. Um, then you have the two inch tread, so six inches off the ground. Um, not usually a problem. Sometimes you need to get two risers under so they can get larger, so we're more than happy to accommodate um, treating either end of the boardwalk to ensure that public safety is uh, included in this. So um, we have asked for about an additional 50 feet of boardwalk. There are some areas that we are watching that have not yet become problem areas, but we're hoping to get pre-approval for a small allotment of additional boardwalking so that if, you know, a small one of these areas uh, does sort of become destabilized that we'll be able to address it 
uh, without having to come back before the before the board. Do you, do you just use plain lumber or do you treat it? No, we use the new generation uh, pressure treated wood. Sorry, the new generation? The in pressure treated, yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So that's, that, it doesn't leak? We had this discussion at the workshop. You know, it's oh, been okay. approved, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a fairly standard use, not in water, but adjacent to water. Under for the resource protection permit standards number five uh, supportive structure had the ramp issue. So I did just hear you say that yes, you would put in the ramps on either end. Sure. Yep. And um, my question then is, you gave yourself, if I heard this correctly, an additional 50 feet of the 250 you're asking for. How much of that will the ramps now eat up? Do you need to ask for even more? I don't know how long ramps are. No, the ramps, I mean, the, generally, it's, you would take one of those 10-inch boards um, and put it at an angle towards the ground. And so you're not talking, uh, so if, if you only need to rise six inches, it's just so you don't have a sharp edge, so people right. don't hit their foot on it. So uh, you know, you typically at a 45-degree angle. Right. Um, for those 10 inches. So it's really, you know, it would only extend eight inches off. Eight inches. All oh, right. So, so if you're giving yourself an additional 50 feet, you need eight inches on possibly on this end, eight inches on that end. Yeah. So out of the 50. And, and out of, and if you say that for, say, seven segments of bridge, you know, that's another 56 inches. So it's not, not a huge amount. I just want to make sure um, now that you said yes to the ramps that you um, yep. have additional because okay. you're asking for the yep. additional foot. Right. So. And, and there are places where where the placement of the boardwalk will be flush with the ground just because you know there's an area of the trail that drops off into a muddy area and then the, the board will end up butting up against that so okay. you know, where, where needed we'll put those in. Thank you. A motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans, materials submitted, and the facts presented, the application of the Camp Elizabeth Land Trust for a resource protection permit to install 250 feet of 30 inch boardwalk and 60 feet of vernal pool fencing in RP1 and RP2 wetlands in Robertson Woods located on Shore Road be deemed complete. I'll second. Anyway, the second motion is discussion of the motion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, I just make one comment, just the way that I heard that read, that we would place within RP1 wetland, we'd place adjacent to, but is that, is that, we're within the setback. I'm just making sure it doesn't read that we're putting it in the water, as it were. But I guess technically we are in the RP1. So. You, you are. Okay. Uh, yep. the, what the motion does is it basically says all the bad places you're in, you have permission to be in. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Further discussion on the merits of the application? I did. Um, when I saw the engineer's letter, there was something about um, putting possibly a sign on the fence. So now I'm talking about the fence. Possibly a sign educating the people on why that fence is there, the yep. purpose for those that can't quite figure out. It's the, and I know that you're always into educational information, and I was wondering, and you did actually said that there used to be a sign there. There, there, there are signs there. There are already yeah. signs there. So, okay, so you have the fence, and yeah. so the engineer's letter mentioned a sign, and you're saying there already is a sign, so we're educating the people and putting up the barrier. Yeah, and we have, you know, a grant proposal in to do educational, or working on a grant proposal to do educational interpretive signage, specifically on vernal pools for the property, and probably put it in that region, so. Okay, thank you. So apparently the dogs aren't reading the signs. Not well. <laughs> Resist. No. Uh, okay, any questions or comments uh, or discussion on the merits of the application? 
Motion for approval. Finding of fact. One, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust is requesting a resource protection permit to install 250 feet of 30 inch wide boardwalk and 60 feet of vernal pool fencing to RP1 and RP2 wetlands in Robinson Woods on Shore Road, which requires review under section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Two. The Conservation Commission recommends that ramps be included on each end of the boardwalks. Three, based on materials from a prior resource protection permit application, the boardwalks appear to be installed in the 100-year floodplain. Four, the application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered, that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for a resource protection permit to install 250 feet of 30 inch wide boardwalk and 60 feet of vernal pool fencing in RP1 and RP2 wetlands in Robinson Woods on Shore Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the boardwalks be constructed with a ramp on each end. Two, that the applicant obtain a floodplain permit from the code enforcement officer. And three, there shall be no alteration of the site until the above conditions are satisfied. Second. I, I have something that's like this. this. might be a little picky, stupid. But um, Chris mentioned that not all boardwalks require ramps on each end. And but uh, this states that boardwalks will be constructed with a ramp on each end. And we need to, is, that, is that stupid? To, we need to clarify that it's not required, it's you, just where you, necessary. You didn't say what the ramp had to be constructed of, so if the ramp is dirt, dirt. okay, we're good. All right, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to see unnecessary building. Thank you, very well, right there with you. All for a vote on the second of the motion. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Chris, you should have gone first. Okay, that is the end of our agenda. Uh, any other matters that members would like to raise and discuss? I just want to give the, the planning board an update that uh, you had recommended to the to the council that you begin work on a technical amendments package. They have approved your recommendation. So once you clear the decks of what's on your on your plate right now, then we can start working on those. Oh, good. Awesome. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second.